Hi everyone and uh, welcome. So in this lesson we are going to be setting up our level just before we get started with the the actual uh, development of our, our game using Uscript. So let's open up Unity here and from last time we were playing around with setting up uh, prefabs and uh, just kind of planes and boxes and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do is we are going to keep using the this level um, only we're going to be just kind of setting it up um, so that it, it'll act as the, the the level for our game. So we're going to keep using this this plane mesh and I'm just going to make sure that it's uh, position is 0, 0 and 0. If you don't have the, the floor mesh, sorry, you can just go into game object, create other and uh, the, the plane object. Okay, and we're just going to make sure it is on the center, uh, 0, 0, 0. Under scale, we're going to make it a lot bigger though, because it's going to be our, our actual game level. So uh, we're going to just make it 15 by 15 by 15. So it's quite a big level, maybe 10 by 10, sorry. 10 by 10 by 10. Okay, and just ensuring that it is 0, 0, 0. Okay, so that, that's our floor object. And make sure it is called floor. Okay, so our floor is here. Now we're going to keep using this box we made called player. And you notice we made a prefab. I'm just going to remove this or delete this prefab for the time being because we're we're going to um, we're going to be making a new one. Okay, so I'm actually just going to delete their player as well. We'll make that from scratch. Uh, I'm going to delete the. I'm going to keep the sunlight in there because it's it's good to have a sunlight. Um, so what's going to happen is our player is going to be in the middle, and enemies will be spawning from the 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 borders of the the game or sorry the level um so we actually want to stop the players from actually hitting those the outside of those levels as well so we're going to make something called a collision box and um, all the collision box or the binding box does is it blocks players from accessing certain areas of a level so all we're going to do is we're going to create another object uh, a cube and i'm just going to hold down the v key V for vertex, and we're going to just click and drag just to snap it onto the floor, like so. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to zoom out and move it, like so. Going to move it way down over into the corner. I'm going to hold down V again, and I'm going to select this corner here. And I'm just going to snap it right here, like so. And that's a really powerful way of using vertex snapping to to snap corners like that really really nicely. Then I'm going to go to my scale tool which is this guy here and using the the red or the this direction here I'm just going to scale it out like so so that it covers the uh, the level and I'm just going to move that. Something like that. Okay and I might just scale it up a wee bit as well although it doesn't really matter. So it's kind of like, think about it as a as a wall, really. I'm just going to use Vertex Snap and to make sure it is snapped like so. And something like that. Okay. I'm going to rename this to Bound. Or Collision, whatever you prefer. And then I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to hit Control and D. Or we can right click our Collision object and hit Duplicate. So that's made a copy of it. Then I'm going to take out the Rotate tool. I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees. So as I'm rotating like this, we can hold down the control key. And whenever we hold down control, it actually snaps it to the, the act or to the grid, like so. Now it does say 90.1 whatever. So I'm just going to rename this to 90. I'm not sure why Unity does that. Then I'm going to go to the move and again move this. And then I'm going to use vertex snapping. So I'm going to hold down V and click and drag on this vertex here and snap it to that corner and then I'm free just to move that any way I wish as long as it is covering so essentially our player is not going to be able to get out of the level which is really really important Control D again to duplicate then I'm going to, in this instance I'm just going to click it and move it like so okay then I'm going to hold down V for vertex snapping click and drag just make sure it is covering the whole edge. Then I'm going to click this guy 
control D again to vertex snap and bring that over. And again, holding down V, I'm going to vertex snap it. This one's a bit trickier because it's harder to see. Like so. So those are our walls. Like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new object. It's going to be an empty game object. And I'll show you what the the, the benefactors of, of doing this is. Um, we're going to go to game object. And we're going to create an empty game object. And I'm just going to call this... Or I'm just going to call this collision box. Or collision bounds. You might want to call it boundary box or something. And then I'm going to center this. Zero, zero, zero. So this is our collision bounds, and it's just an empty object, like so. It's only a container. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and select our four collision boxes. And I'm going to drag that into the collision bounds object. So now our collision bounds object actually stores our four collision boxes, which is really handy. So um, with that, um, we, we can keep using those boxes as the as a mesh, as a um, visual representation, or we can actually select the four collision boxes. And what we can do is we can actually um, turn off what's called the mesh render, which means that you won't actually see the boxes, but you will still hit through them. You'll notice that there's a green box still around them. And what this is, is it's the, the box collider, so it's the actual collision mesh, meaning that if a player or if an object hits against it, and if physics are turned on, then um, you, you can't pass through it. For the time being, I'll just keep the mesh render on. It's not a big deal, really. Um, and that's it for the, the, the binding boxes. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually bring in some uh, custom assets. I've made a little tile floor for you. Um, and this can be found in the, the assets, uh, part of the resources with uh, this uh, in this uh, course. So what we have is we've got two uh, assets. One's called tile and one's called tile M. And what the tile is, it's just a, a tiny uh, uh, tile texture. And this will uh, apply to your whole scene or to your floor. And then we've got tile M. And what this is, it's called a normal map. And what the normal map does is it kind of bumps out um, detail. So it'll actually make these tiles look like uh, as if they're being um, embeveled and extruded upwards. So let's bring these in. And there's multiple ways of bringing assets in into Unity. What we can do is we can drag these in, like so. Or in Unity itself, we can go to a game object, or sorry, assets, and we can hit import new asset, and we can import it that way. Or we can right click in our project view and hit import asset. And then we can find them. What I tend to do is I just tend to bring up my, my Windows Explorer and just drag in multiple assets. So I'm just going to click and drag those in, like so. And that is it. Those are imported. So the next thing we need to do is these textures actually need a material associated with it. If you remember, we made a material for our gun and a material for our player. So I'm just going to right click and create a new one. So I'm going to create a material and I'm going to call this uh, M underscore floor. So this is a material for the floor. Now, under shader, you may remember last time we used something called a specular, which means it has a color and a, a highlight. In this case, we're going to use something called a bumped specular. So bumped is literally going to bump our um, detail, give some detail. And specular will also be a bit of shine as well. So click on bump specular. And then you'll see that we have a main color. We have a specular color with a shininess value. And then we've got two inputs for two textures. So our textures are these images, and these are plugged into a material. So under the material, we're going to click on this none texture for our base color. So I'm going to hit select, and we're going to find our tile. So we can just type in tile and double click. So now our material actually has the, the tile applied. Now before we actually put on the normal map, I'm just going to show you the, how this will look. So click and drag your, your floor material onto the floor. And so at the moment the, the entire floor has this one tile. Okay, and it looks pretty it looks really uh, kind of pixelated and pretty bad.
That's because it's being scaled over the entire floor, and our floor is quite a big, is using quite a big scale factor, 10 by 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our floor material, and there's an option called tiling, and this only works with um, uh, textures that can be tiled. And what it means by tiling is um, it means that a texture can be repeated over and over again uh, without, uh, without any kind of seams uh, being uh, shown. And I've made this texture so it will tile properly. So under tiling X and Y, we're going to type in 10 and 10. And what this has done is it's actually tiled this over. Now don't get confused because it is actually a tile texture, but the fact that the texture will repeat itself. So if we look here, here's one tile, two tiles, three, and so on. So it just repeats over itself. If you want this to be um, increased, you could type in maybe 15 by 15. Um, don't touch the offset. There's no, um, we don't need to touch the offset. So that's our texture, really, our material setup, and it's quite, it's quite flat at the moment. Um, that's because we literally just have a base color. So let's now look at plugging in the normal map that this is called. So back to M underscore floor, we're going to go to the normal map and hit select. I'm going to type in tile, and I'm going to double click this tile N. Okay. Now you'll get an error, and it looks pretty bad actually. We've got this option called this texture is not marked as a normal map. So textures actually need to be set up to whatever type they are. For 90% of the time you'll be choosing texture, although in this case we'll be choosing normal map. But before we actually click it, we're just going to go back to our M underscore floor. And Unity actually just has a fix button. So we can just click that and it will automatically do it. Now well, you'll notice this still doesn't look right. You can see it's kind of there's something happening in the center. This is because that we also need to set the tiling for our normal map. It, it needs to be identical to whatever the, the base color is. So I'm going to type in 15 and 15. Now if I zoom in, you'll kind of see that the, the tiles have this kind of indent on each tile, which is exactly what we're looking for. Um, and this works with the, the lighting within Unity. So um, it'll be more prominent if there are lights. And I'll just show you what I mean. I'm just going to create a point light and move it up and just look at what happens with the tiles as I hover them over the, the floor. You'll see the kind of the indent kind of works. You can see it more prominently. This is because the normal maps use lighting to create this offset effect. Okay, so I'm just going to delete that. Um, and if you wish, you can also apply your uh, these tiles to the, the sides as well. Although the problem with that is because we've scaled these in such a way, they will look a bit strange. So I might actually just undo that for the time being. Okay, that's pretty much our level setup. We have our collision bounds. We have our sunlight floor main camera. Now, what I'm gonna quickly do is I'm gonna delete our uh, material. Uh, actually, no, I'll just leave those as it is. Uh, go back to the M underscore floor and I'm just going to give the floor a specular color. So I'm just going to click that. Uh, maybe not a red, but a nice bluish color. You'll see that the specular also works with the normal map. So it's more prominent where the 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 kind of bump is happening. You can also change the brightness. I tend to have this around halfway. Okay. So just making sure that everything is kind of clean. So we have a, we're going to make some folders in our project file. I'm going to right click and hit create folder. And I'm going to call this materials. And this is going to store all of our materials. Excuse me. I'm just going to drag our materials into that folder. Um, and then I'm going to right click, make a new folder called textures. And that's going to store all the textures for our level or for our game sorry and then we have our our, our, our level called test and um, i'm just going to right click create new folder and call this scenes or levels and drag that in as well so everything is quite nicely organized which is really important when making your game and then under the hierarchy as well we're going to kind of try make this as uh, using as less clutter or at least uh, amount of clutter 
So I'm going to go to game object and create another empty game object. I'm going to make sure it's in the 0, 0, 0 position. And I'm going to call this static level objects. So any kind of level objects that aren't going to move in the game, that aren't kind of part of the gameplay, uh, like environment pieces and lights and so on, uh, I'm going to bring them into this. So I'm going to drag our collision bounds into here. I'm going to drag our sunlight into here. I'm going to drag our floor into here. I'm going to leave the camera for the time being because I'm, I'm happy enough where uh, our camera will move um, with our player. So everything that's static is now inside here. And if we were to move this, our entire level moves, which is quite handy. Okay. And that's that really. That's our scene now set up. Um, I might just do one more thing. I'm going to make a new material. I'm going to call this M. Um, I'm going to call this sides. I'm going to make this a specular because we don't have a normal map to create bumpiness. I'm just going to make this maybe a, another bluish color and a specular. And I'm going to apply that to the sides. Just as a little visual representation. Okay, so that's the sides of our game. Uh, color's a bit strange, so I might just have a quick change here. Okay. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do, I promise this is the last thing. We're going to go to uh, Edit, and we're going to go to uh, Project Settings, and we're going to go to Quality. And this is where we can actually change the quality of our game. So, by default, it's set to the good preset. I'm just going to click on Fantastic and it just sets up some uh, additional properties. You may notice that the quality and the textures did change. They went a bit sharper and it also improves things like lighting quality and shadows. So that's it. That's our level set up ready to actually start implementing gameplay. So thank you for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Also, don't forget to save your level, file and save scene. See you in the next one.